Hello everybody, so you know I've been doing my prehistory or secret prehistory series and I learned about something that touches on that um, called the uncanny valley. This is a term that people use, I've sometimes described it as a genetic memory. Um, essentially every person that's born or at least the vast majority of people that are born if they are given something that is a bit too lifelike but is not alive that is not human that looks a little bit too human but is not quite human they get scared so that's whether it's a, a doll or a robot or even just people that look a little bit off so you know re aliens that look like people so we're not like if you get an alien and it looks very alien like not remotely human like we're like yeah who cares you make a humanoid and it's got a lot of heavy makeup and it's got horns and it's obviously not human we're like yeah whatever but you make it an alien that's oh looks almost exactly like a human but a little bit different such as perhaps the lizard people of the v franchise or v tv series who were just humans just just had a tongue and then they ate people you're like oh oh that's pretty scary and it's scary because it's too realistic because if we see something that's you know looks like klingon with alien whatever we know that they're alien we know they're not human it's sort of scary in its own sense or it can be but if it's a bit too too much like us it's quite scary like the thing for example that's another example that was just they mimic humans but then they weren't human and they turned to mush and ugh. and the same is also true for other more innocent looking things so for example dolls and robots but dolls for example we've had the technology or the ability to make dolls that look exactly like humans for at least several centuries and in fact you can look at some some dolls from two or three hundred years ago that looked exactly like humans that today you'd look at it and go Hoo. and the reason why we stopped doing it was because people would go Hoo, and they'd be scared by them and kids playing with them would be scared by them and if they weren't scared then parents would be scared of them and you've got a whole range of doll horror movies that are based on this uncanny valley concept and it's not always called uncanny valley this I, I, I mean i describe it as a genetic memory but essentially that's what it's all about so why why does this exist so there's a number of theories and i think that one theory that is perhaps the simplest it just goes to our genetic protection of us as a species uh, a protection against evolution because evolution essentially states that eventually another type of human or human-like creature will emerge will be born perhaps manipulated by viruses or whatever it might be just luck who knows and it'll be born with a disability that's not a disability that it's a it's a positive see fucking hell the vast majority of disabilities are negative and occasionally so most people that are born that are different it's a negative to them some are more negative than others but the vast majority are negative some are neutral some are just different but some are superior so let's say for example that you were you were born and your brain capacity was was bigger let's say that you were born and you had a better ability to concentrate let's say you were born and you could become a master of any craft well, now I'm sounding like I'm talking describing autism, but um, people would be scared because they would know that that's a positive disability. That's not really a positive, it's not really a disability if it's positive. Um, but this difference could make that group of people eventually, not, not straight away, but eventually over several hundred years, if they, if they joined one group, they could overtake and surpass the groups like normal humans so I don't want to say that's autism but even though that does seem like I'm describing autism but um, <clears throat> of course some people with autism are quite negative um, but then that's not really due to the autism anyway 
I digress a bit there. Um, <laughs> but essentially, whatever it is. So, you know, like if we if we go back in the in the past, so the predecessors of our current lot of Homo sapiens sapiens, which were just plain Homo sapiens. So plain Homo sapiens came around about 360,000 years ago, and then Homo sapiens sapiens, what we call our modern humans, were 160,000 years ago. So it's a 200,000 year gap. So at some point, somebody had children who were superior to them. And what did they do? Probably would have tried to kill them. At least once you found out. You might not kill them at birth, but you might wait a bit and then kill them. And, or you'd shun them. Because if you nurtured them and let them grow, then eventually there'd be enough of them that they would overtake. And of course that's happened throughout human history, throughout all animals history and plant history too for that matter birds every animal doesn't matter you'd either have a, a split off or you'd have a replacement and you know it's not humans that make everything extinct I mean, we, we're responsible for a lot of extinctions but other similar species make other species go extinct because they're born and they're superior in some way and we're at least able to defeat them and it's usually the superior one that, that defeats them. Not always, sometimes superior numbers or superior resistance to disease or whatever it is. But yeah, so there's that factor and that factor can't be ignored. So that could be the uncanny valley could exist in every animal. And the second thing then is the idea that we uh, actually were superior in times past to what we are today. Now I've gone over this, um, the whole the whole thing where we assume that we're the strongest ever is recency bias. We're just, you know, if, if you take a cricket um, metaphor, a lot of people say, well, I was born in whichever year, well, I'm born in 1975, so therefore anyone who was doing anything before then was either so hopeless that it's not worth worrying about or didn't actually exist, I've got no proof that they existed. And in fact, I can't remember much of the first five or six years of my life, so anyone before 1981 is irrelevant. And the same would be true for anyone. Anything before about whatever they were, five or six years of age, is irrelevant. So for me, five or six years of age is about 1981, 1982. So, and I'm talking about cricket as a metaphor here, but as also an example, any cricket player is born after 1981, or played after 1981, I should say, I, I take, pay attention to. So I'd say, oh yeah, Greg Chapel, and I compare them all to each other. But anyone before that, I pay less attention to. And yet then some people who are younger than me, they would say, oh no, you only pay attention to people that are playing in 2005 or 2000, anything earlier than that doesn't matter. And I'd say, no, there were some pretty good players. And then they go, oh yeah, but Don Bradman was useless. They go, really? <laughs> and they go, WG Grace was useless. And I go, okay. Um, you know, all, all these players because they were too be before their time. So, yeah, I go, well, you know, can't the same principle be applied generally as well? And when we say, oh, we're the best technology we've ever been, could that be just recency bias? And in this case, recency for the past 10,000, 11,000 years. And I mean, we've got to, we've got to have one thing that I'm going to say is an absolute truth. The, the technology we had before the last cataclysm, so 11,400 years ago, was better than the technology we had after. So given that the, there's a bit of debate as to when the cataclysm happened, and let's say it lasted for 700 years. So we'll say anywhere from 12,100 to 10,700 years ago is when the cataclysm happened, because we're not sure when it started, when it ended, blah, blah, blah. There's a bit of scope there. So let's say the technology 12,500 years ago was better than the technology 10,500 years ago. Because then we're definitely either side of the cataclysm. So we can, I can say that in an absolute certainty. I have no doubt. Because we would have had every, all the, all the uh, technology would have been destroyed and the bits that weren't destroyed by the cataclysm, we would have gone around, or enough of us would have gone around and deliberately destroyed it because they would have blamed the cataclysm on the technology. 
and we know that we do this we've done this we do this all the time um so and of course the people that survive would want to feel like they're better than everybody else so anything that disputes that needs to be destroyed so we could say that either side of, of cataclysms and this is not just that cataclysm but all cataclysms and we have them regularly every 15 to 25,000 years so every time just before a cataclysm we're at our peak and just after the cataclysm we're at our worst technology wise at least once we finish destroying all the uh, pre-cataclysm technology which might take a few hundred years uh, and, and we've got all sorts of uh, post-apocalyptic computer games and movies and stuff to show us doing that and it, it's pretty obvious that we would do that so with that in mind and we know that the last cataclysm gap was actually about 28,000 years which is quite a long time we can say that the technology that they had before that cataclysm is stronger than our technology is today because we've only had about 11,000 years they had 28 so if we get to 28,000 years I'd say we should be ahead of them and at what point would we get ahead of them? That is a bit harder to predict, but I would say probably in about eight to 10,000 years, maybe 12,000 years, we'd start to get ahead of they, where they were just before the cataclysm. And then we can sort of work out from that when we were last at this point, roughly this point in technology advancement. And that would have been about eight to 10,000 years before the last cataclysm. So that'd be about 20 to 22,000 years ago. 20 to 25,000 years ago maybe and that's that's when we would have been at this point and we would have then got more advanced then let's go back to the, the cataclysm before that that only had a 15,000 year gap we might have surpassed they might never have got up to our level so then we go to the one before that they had a 25,000 year gap so we say okay well and of course we assume that we got a better but anyway going back going back going back going back if we go to the last, so the oldest cataclysm that we, we had this level of technology we have today, it's probably about 250, 300,000 years ago. So anything, as long as, depending on where you are in the cataclysm gap, there is every chance that they were ahead of where we are today. And also they wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have advanced in the same way. They would have focused on different things to what we focused on. So, because that's a little bit random. So there's definitely a lot of scope, large periods of time where we would have been ahead of where we are today. Um, anything going back to 250,000, 300,000, maybe even 500,000 years ago. Now, probably not before that, but up to there. So there's every chance that we did build robots and that we, they were used to do terrible things. And then there's the big one. We know that we had a war with the Neanderthals or against the Neanderthals. And we probably had the giants on our side against them giants being the Denosovans. Now we didn't call them Neanderthals. What we did call them, I believe, was probably orcs, goblins, and perhaps other terms in other parts of the world. We, we would have given them derogatory terms and described them in really revolting ways. But in reality, they would have looked very similar to us and acted very similar. And after we defeated them, so in the, in the initial war, which might've been about 100,000 years ago, around about, we won, and then they fought and they hid and they had more secretive fights. And those fights could have kept going right up until about 12 or 13,000 years ago. So we're talking about 90,000 years of conflict. And all the time there would have been fears that your sister was secretly a Neanderthal, your brother was secretly a Neanderthal, all these different things because you wouldn't know. And then when, so 8,000 years ago, white people emerged, we thought, meaning people weren't white, would, would have thought, well, the white people that were the Neanderthals, and so they were killed, they were racially abused. And at that point, that's when we realised as a species, well, actually, first, before we realised that, we, we then went around the world and killed all the pygmies. So this happened about 8,000 years ago. All the little innocent pygmies who had not had anything to do with us in Indonesia, in Australia, in whichever country, were killed. And um, perhaps not all of them, but a lot of them. I think some might have survived in South America. And we went around and we killed them. We killed them because we thought they were Neanderthals. Uh, we, we, we weren't using the term Neanderthal then, obviously. Probably calling it, thought they were orcs, let's say. Thought they were goblins. Thought they were trolls. Thought they were ogres. Thought they were some kind of bad creature that we had to kill. 
And then after that, we felt bad. And we felt so bad that we created at least two religions. And I'm just going to say it would have been more than two. But Judaism and Hinduism are the two that have survived to the modern day. We probably created a lot of others, and the others might have fallen by the wayside because they were created badly. And these were dishonest religions. These were never meant to be factual. So previous religions were largely quite factual. So we deliberately lied in those religions. And the lies we knew were a lie. And we were lying because we knew that we'd done the wrong thing. So we had to hide this. We believed that we should hide our past. And this is why history starts about 8,000 years ago, six to 8,000 years ago. So in that six to 8,000 year ago period, that 2,000 years ago period is when we did all of our lying. This is when we hid everything. We hid all of our past. Now, some people tried to keep it alive. I'm sure there's no doubt that they did, but they were in the minority. They were either killed or they were suppressed or they went along with it. And, you know, different results for different people. And in the end, there weren't enough of them to keep things alive. And we lost all of our history. Um, things like the Great Pyramids of Giza are some of our last remaining things from before that that actually give us a hint as to what it was actually like before that. But then people say, oh, the pyramids of Giza, not that old. And it's unfortunate that we now believe that, and we say that. We say, oh, Atlantis, well, let's not, build, let's not dig up that area we know to be Atlantis, because that might have things that will tell us about this bit that's buried, this secret. Because, and the secret is really that we were, we were committing genocide on a global scale. And by genocide, I mean Homo sapiens sapiens against Neanderthals. And not just Neanderthals, but also pygmies. And probably even Denosovans as well. And we did it just because they were different to us. And the remnants of that is racism. Racism is the evil that pervades, that is a remnant of that time. But a lesser evil of that is this, um, what's it called, the valley, the uncanny valley that it's not, it's not racism, but it's sort of a, an anti-speciesism idea that makes us afraid. That is the core basis of racism. That is the core basis of our fear. And how do we undo that? I think the best way to undo it is to unlock these lies that we've told, these secrets from the prehistory that we like to pretend aren't there, which we have some hint of. So that, I believe, is the secret to unlocking that truth and realising what's really going on now. What exactly is going on? Can we ever have lifelike robots or are they just a bad idea? I mean, I know I read it somewhere they had, had a doll that they created quite recently, and a type of doll, I mean, and it was realistic looking and you could make it look like your recently deceased child. So you had a child die. You could have a doll created to look exactly like the child. Could even move like the child, could even have some of his or her voices and the child's voices. And then you could fill it full of their ashes from the actual child's ashes. And there was a, a guy, a father, flying on a plane and he took out, he, he took two seats and in the second seat he put his doll daughter that had her ashes in her. Now some people say, oh that's sweet, how sweet that is. For me that's terrifying, that's scary. That's almost forcing that, that child who's, who's moved on to possess that doll. <laughs> I, I don't know, I think if you're dead, you, you should let yourself be dead and just carry on to whatever happens after that. Um, things like that I do not approve of. I can understand why people do it. I'm not, I, I wouldn't say, don't you do that, if I saw someone doing that. I'd just be sort of like going, nope, nope, I'm going to get away from that. <laughs> just sort of back away slowly. <laughs> Um, yeah, because that's the uncanny valley thing. And so, is that dangerous? Probably isn't. Are life like robots dangerous? Well, we've seen enough for Terminator to see, well, they probably would be. Um, but are, are we dealing with that out of irrational fear? Or is it a realistic thing that we should be afraid of? Um, I, don't, I don't know. But I think that the answer lies in um, in digging up our past, digging up the rich hat, um, looking into the, the pyramid properly, looking into Atlantis properly and truthfully, and being honest about everything. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye bye now.